Watering waves versus Genshin Impact is something I'm sure most of you are familiar with. For those of you who don't know what this is, allow me to explain. Ever since the first alpha footage for Watering Ways was released, there has been an ongoing war between these two communities. In Team Pink, we have Genshin fanboys who treat Watering like an uninspired, boring, trash, blatant ripoff of Genshin. A group of people who say it is so strong, they actively hope for the downfall of Watering. On Team Purple, we have the angry guardians of Watering Waves, a group of people that defend the game by actively attacking Genshin. Not only saying the game itself is trash, but that the players themselves are complete morons. And I truly believe that both of these teams suck. Now, to be clear, not everybody in their respective communities are participating in this pointless war. Most players are just going about their day, logging into Genshin to finish dailies and do some farming, or patiently waiting for May 22nd in order to finally play this highly anticipated game. But we aren't here to talk about that. We're here to discuss drama. <laughs> the point of this video is not to call people out, so I won't be showing any receipts of people talking trash. But trust me, you are one quick Google search away from seeing all of the anger. This will primarily be a short discussion video, so feel free to play this video in the background while you do something else. Cook, clean, work out, whatever floats your boat. And if you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe. Like previously mentioned, a lot of Genshin fans are mad for a variety of reasons. One of them is because they think Watering Waves stole from Genshin in every single aspect. Gameplay, world design, exploration, gotcha system, character designs, etc, etc. Which is absolutely ridiculous. I'm sorry, but Genshin did not invent any of the systems that fanboys seem to think they did. For example, the combat in Genshin is a very basic action format. Normal attack, heavy attack, charge attack, and skills is something you can find in 99% of every action game ever created. Nier, Devil May Cry, Dynasty Warriors, Ninja Gaiden, Stellar Blade, Legacy of Kain, The Legend of Spyro, God of War, Sonic Unleashed, and the list goes on. Exploration is also incredibly basic if we're being honest with ourselves. Simple traversal with even simpler puzzles randomly thrown about the map, and a tower that reveals the map. Knock knock, who's there? Assassin? Assassin who? Assassin who's going to Ubisoft all over your thick, juicy ass if you don't stop acting like Genshin invented breathing! Let's be honest here, the glider and climbing is ripped straight from Breath of the Wild. If you truly do believe that Watering stole from Genshin, then you must also acknowledge that Genshin took a lot of its core systems from other games as well. And more than anything, what does it matter if Watering has similar systems to Genshin? Did we forget that genres exist? Are these two games similar? Yes, but that's simply because they exist in the same genre of open world, action combat, gacha game. And even then, there are clear differences between the two. For example, Watering does not have the elemental reaction system of Genshin. Watering does have elemental classes that characters belong to, but that's just an average RPG system. Watering also puts more of a focus on its core combat systems. It's more fast-paced and reactive than Genshin, with more of a focus on performing flashy combos. The truth is that no one game owns a gameplay system. No one game owns a mechanic. No one game owns a gimmick, a concept, an idea. New games are constantly being inspired by past works in order to create something fresh. Watering is no different. Taking inspiration from Genshin, sure, but also games like Nier, Devil May Cry, and plenty of others. To be clear, while I am being aggressive for comedic purposes at some points, I'm not one of these people who despises Genshin with every fiber of my being. Once upon a time, I actually loved Genshin. No joke, it was one of my favorite games ever. But that was back in the halcyon days of year one. I thought the gameplay was fun, if a bit simple, exploration was enjoyable, albeit very repetitive, and the characters were fun. Although in all of my time of playing, 
I was never able to get the one character I wanted more than anybody else, Mona. She was the first character I saw for the game in a trailer months before the release. I wanted to get her, but I never did. I got multiple copies of every other standard 5 star, but never the one I wanted. Slowly, over time, I became more and more dissatisfied with the game, taking longer and longer breaks, eventually quitting altogether back in version 4.2. I logged in, summoned for Furina and her weapon, got them both, somehow, <laughs> really lucky, played as her for an hour and then logged out and uninstalled forever. The reason I bring this up is to show that while I am excited for Wondering, I'm not one of these morons running around praying for the downfall of Genshin, which is a big problem with the Wondering Waves community right now. A lot of players want the game to succeed with the hopes that it will kill Genshin Impact. They want Wondering to be the fabled Genshin Killer. If you truly are excited for Wondering, if you truly want to see it be successful, grow and prosper, then you shouldn't want Genshin to fail. Why? Simple, healthy competition. One of the core reasons as to why Genshin never got the improvements it desperately needed was because it never needed to change. It was the only game of its kind on the market. It was the only open world action combat gacha game. There was zero competition to force Mihoyo to make the changes they needed to. And if Watering Waves ends up killing Genshin like a lot of people wanted to, the same tragic fate will befall it. Kuro games will have zero competition, and because of that, they won't have any incentive to improve Watering outside of a personal desire to do so. The best thing that could possibly happen to both of these games is for both of them to be successful. The best thing that could possibly happen to both of these games is for both of them to be successful. Having a healthy competition to light a fire under the asses of both studios will only benefit the players of both games. And this goes for any other open world action combat gacha game that comes out in the future. For example, Azure Permelia and Project Mugen. The truth of the matter is that this moronic war between Genshin and Wuthering fans is pointless. Either side winning would only do more harm than any amount of good. Do you like Genshin? Yes? Then you should want Wuthering to succeed, because their success will make the game that you already like even better than you already think it is. Do you like Wuthering? Yes? Then you should hope Genshin doesn't crash and burn. That way, Kudo Games has a white whale to try and continuously conquer. If both games succeed, then neither company will become complacent and rest on their laurels. They will both strive to improve in order to earn more and more money. Ultimately, both communities would walk away winners. All of that being said, those are my thoughts on the war between Watering Waves and Genshin Impact. What are yours? Feel free to share them in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like, dislike, subscribe, or don't. It's up to you, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.